carve out a, a spoon if you really want to, but it's just something that I want you to be able to take home and, you know, hopefully do a really good job on it so that you keep it. And then, you know, when they're our age, they look back on it and be like, oh, okay, yeah, I remember doing that. Hi, everyone. Thanks for listening to another episode of The Creative Truth. Today, I'm joined with my very special friend from high school, from technically junior high school, from college, technology teacher extraordinaire, Sarah Cerrone. Hey. (laughs) Welcome to the show. (laughs) Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on. Uh, So, the first question I like to... to Hit them hard out of the gate. Yeah. How has where you're from affected the person you are today? That's a good question. Um, I feel like with with all the experiences that I've had from just high school and even through college, I mean, I'm also I'm just from New York, so you know, I don't know. It just became the person who I am. <laughs> um different experiences. I think my friends also helped me kind of shape, kind of helped me along the way. Because just like everyone, kind of lost, <laughs> especially like in college and everything like that. And uh, it takes you a while to just kind of figure out who the heck you are. But you started in college as a tech ed major, right? Yeah, and I stayed through tech ed, got my graduate degree in technology education, um, had my first teaching gig down in the southern tier of new york now i'm back in syracuse um so just been traveling around new york and just gaining more experience in teaching actually also different types of students that i'm dealing with too Mm. so how'd you know that's what you wanted to do uh i'd say like when i was in high school the the best place to like hang out is with the tech teachers <laughs> jeffrey forte yeah i mean that's how we became even better friends is from taking his what class did we take web design yeah web design and then also one i don't know what it was called but it was for like shooting and uh media production media production editing and premiere and after effects yeah so like i really enjoyed doing that stuff along with photoshop any of the adobe program any of the adobe programs i really enjoyed working with but uh forte was just like an awesome teacher and he was just chill laid back and he was like the teacher that you always go to and just like not really care what else is happening in the school day shout out mr forte it's been a long time (laughs) i know (laughs) um so do you remember any of the projects you worked on back then Uh, i remember making a website um all I know is I think uh, I did it on the Jonas Brothers because <laughs> um, that's where the obsession began. And um, I mean, you know, I really liked the Jonas Brothers. Um, I remember also photoshopping myself and Caitlin Ketchum at the time with uh, Ryan Sheckler. <laughs> I think all my projects were skateboarding related. Probably not Ryan Sheckler related, but no. But um, yeah, I remember that. We just had like a really good time just photoshopping just random stuff. (laughs) So do you teach any of that kind of stuff to your students now? Unfortunately, uh, no, because some of the schools didn't really have the programs because Adobe, I mean, it's pretty expensive, especially if you need to have license for the whole classroom. Um, But but I kind of I kind of did it on my own a little bit. I had like a like a cheap version of of like Photoshop and stuff like that that I just went online, find tutorials, and just follow along, kind of like what I did in high school. Um, in college, I did a lot of Adobe programs. I remember doing working with, with Flash, but I don't think Flash even, ex- I don't think Flash exists anymore. There's a new program in the Adobe suite that's that pretty much is Flash, but they don't call it Flash anymore, because it's not Flash Player. No one uses Flash Player anymore. Yeah. Apple kind of was like, eh, <laughs> yeah. Um, do you think your students see you the way that you see Jeffrey, Mr. Forte and your, those other tech teachers? Uh, I definitely think so. Like, uh, I've had students tell me that I was pretty chill. Um, and pretty much how I talk to, to you as my friend, 
that's how I talk to the students. And I think that's where the connection is. And that's where they're like, oh, this is kind of like a different, different kind of teacher. Um, and whenever they walk into my classroom, it's just, uh, they already know that's a safe environment and whatever they're going through, kind of like uh, a weight has lifted off their shoulders and they can just be who they are in my classroom. Except for this past year. Well, yeah. <laughs> um, it would be a virtual classroom, I'd say. Yeah. So um, what kind of stuff do you avoid doing as a teacher? Like some things that you didn't like in some of your other teachers, basically. Uh, usually you have like a student who other teachers talk about that they're probably not the best student in the world. Um, they could always be getting into trouble and stuff like that. And whenever they get in the classroom, I treat everyone like fresh start. Mm -hmm. Even if I had them, like if I taught them in seventh grade and I had them again in eighth grade and back in seventh grade, if they were like not a good student, fresh start. And I think that's what they like. What's the hardest part about teaching, you know, with the whole virtual climate and the potential lockdown and... Everything going uh, on. Just having kids, like students, actually participating, logging on to computers. Like when I first started teaching, I thought it was going to be a little bit easier because, you know, computers, like they, they were born with, with computers around and I thought they knew how to use them. But I've come to find out that they don't even know how to turn on the computer. They don't even know how to save a file. They don't know how to hit print, and they can't find the printer. <laughs> uh, so they they pretty much only know how to use the computer like this. Mm. Um, do you know what you do? You remember what you wanted to be when you were a little kid? Yeah, I wanted to be a veterinarian, <laughs> pretty much like any other kid. But I loved animals, and sometimes I still think about like mm, maybe if I was more dedicated in my math and science. I could have probably got could have gone down that route. Hmm. Although technology education is kind of math and science heavy, right? Yeah, but not biology, of but course. not like organic chemistry or like whatever. Right. <laughs> this episode of the Creative Truth is sponsored by Colas Modern, a family-owned art and design studio focused on producing contemporary furniture and home decor based right here in Savannah, Georgia. The company is owned by David and Lara Colas. David is a former podcast guest. So if you haven't listened to that one, go check it out. All of their furniture and home goods are designed and manufactured right here in Savannah, Georgia, handmade, uh, including this coffee table, which is like an absolute favorite of mine. So if you're looking for a personal gift with a story behind it, you can check out some of their unique cutting boards, so like their butler board, their cleaver board, or their fruit board, and more. You can follow them on Instagram at shopmodernheritage or find them online at shopmodernheritage.com. That's on Instagram. Instagram at Shop Modern Heritage or online at shopmodernheritage.com. So when you said you found um, that program online that's like Photoshop, um, that's not necessarily part of what is the expected criterion for class, right? No, but the you have to come to think about like you have to think about we don't get a lot of money in our budget, so we kind of go for like free programs that you can find online and work from that. Do you think that you're creative during your day to day? Um, I'd say so. It just depends. Like if, if the kids are, if the students are working with measuring and stuff like that, even though they don't know how to measure, they get confused between inches and centimeters. <laughs> um, well, I do too. Well, it doesn't help with science. You work, you use centimeters and the rest of the world uses centimeters and we, you know, we Americans, we like to do things a little different. <laughs> um, but when it comes to them either working on a project, like through like a CAD program, or they're doing a woodworking project, like I kind of stem from that and kind of come up with some, some weird project that I'm working on. Mm. And they can see that, you know, you can do whatever you want. You just have to plan stuff out. Have you inspired, do you think you've inspired any of your students to go into the field? Oh yeah, of course. I, uh, I keep in touch with one of my students that, I, that was in my seventh grade class the first year I started teaching. 
and um, he's out in Ohio. Uh, he's going to be starting his sophomore year there. He plays lacrosse out there, and uh, he's going to become a mechanical engineer. And it was all thanks to my CAD class. So how do you keep up with him? Uh, we exchange text messages and stuff like that. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, I have a couple teachers from my middle school Mm, one or two from high school that like really made an impact on me. Yeah. And it is interesting that like you process or, you know, you've got 30 kids in each class, 20, 30 kids in each class. So you're meeting hundreds of kids, but for those kids, you're going to last stick in their memory, you know, for the rest of their lives. You know, if you, you just leave a lifelong mark on, on people. So, yeah, I didn't really think about that until, you know, the, my first set of students, like, I really care about my first set of students that I taught. And uh, I've been following them through, you know, the rest of their middle school and then all through high school. And um, I've been keeping tabs either. I made, like, a, a teacher Instagram page for back when I was at my old school. And so that's how I uh, keep in contact with some of them. And then also they just randomly found me on Facebook <laughs> and um, I just pop them a message once in a while and be like, what's new? What's going on? And they tell me what's going on. And it makes me feel like like a proud parent in a way that, you know, they've they they're starting to become young adults and start having a future pretty much like how we were <laughs> maybe even still trying to figure things out. Um. You did a lot of, I mean, you were into music, you were into sports. What kind of extra collegiates were you doing when you were coming up, of, you know, leading up to, I guess, even through college? Well, high school, well, not even high school. I think I stopped, like, what, ninth grade, where I played basketball and lacrosse. Um, then I, pretty much high school, I kind of focused on my music. I played piano and clarinet, but I solely focused on my, my clarinet, and, um, I did very well. I, I was like in all county and area all state. One proud thing was that I was uh, with one of the auditions I did for all county. I mean, it was second in the county for clarinet. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, cool. Wait, so you personally? Yeah. It was like a solo show? Well, no. It's just like out of everything, I was two. Wow. That's awesome. <laughs> and so uh, I didn't play in the actual band. I played in the orchestra. Yeah. And that was an amazing year because my stand partner was my actual stand partner that I had in high school. Mm. And then I had a lot of my other my other friends from my band like sat behind me and played percussion, French horn, uh, trumpet. It was just like a nice Beville clan. <laughs> and then, you know, college rolls around and uh, I played some rugby for a few years, which is amazing sport i really wish that i could still play it but i kind of hurt myself for that and just old <laughs> and not in shape anymore <laughs> um but i still actually play my clarinet and piano um i'm in a community two community bands i didn't know that yep i it was just like when i came back home i was just like i really want to play my clarinet again i kind of miss it because i played it all through college too i don't know if you went to any of my concerts Yes, I did. Was it because you had to? Because of... I don't know if I did. Because of the music class? <laughs> <laughs> Let's pretend I did. <laughs> um, yeah, so community bands and... Did you play with James? No. Okay. Because he was in orchestra. I saw one of his shows. And I was in band. Well, excuse me. <laughs> so the community, you're in a community band now? Yeah, I'm in two. Back at home. So do you do like a, how often do you do a show, like a performance? Well, before COVID happened, we used to play, uh, we used to do concerts at nursing homes, but now nice. we're really not, you can't, yeah. can't really do that. But some of my bands, they had concerts like out in parks and stuff like that since the, the mandate and everything has lifted up there and, um, it was kind of nice, but I wasn't able to perform at the concert because I wasn't there. <laughs> so how'd you get into music in the first place? My mother, because she was a music teacher. She taught private piano lessons and still does. And um, started playing piano when I was in second grade. And then my brother 
Uh, he also played piano, but he went the string route and played violin when you were able to pick it up in third grade, I think, third or fourth grade. And then a year later, you know, you could pick up a band instrument if you wanted to. And so I wanted to play a band instrument because I didn't want to follow in the footsteps of my brother. It's probably a good thing because he was really good. <laughs> um, so I wanted to play flute. And so they gave me the they gave me the flu and they said to blow into the mouthpiece and stuff like that and I couldn't make a sound and to this day I still remember that my band teacher telling me that I couldn't play flute because of the shape of my lips I don't know how why but that was it then they gave me uh, a trumpet mouthpiece and I couldn't even make a noise couldn't buzz in it <laughs> Interesting. And then they're like, here, suck on this. And it was a reed. And from then on, I played the clarinet. <laughs> so you just kind of fell into it. Yeah. And um, I was pretty good at it. And once I got to the high school, that's when I went away with study halls. And, and then I was in two bands. And so I played clarinet. I played oboe. played English horn. Bass clarinet. The flute. <laughs> I was able to make noise and everything, and um, what was interesting is that the oboe and the clarinet, you know, clarinet is single reed, oboe is double reed, um, and then the fingerings are completely different. Mm -hmm. So people were like, you can't play the oboe because, you know, it would mess up your fingering for clarinet. Of course, you know, I like to challenge people, and I was able to play oboe and clarinet, and I played oboe throughout college as well. Hmm. Um, do you... Let's see. Do you think it's important to have some sort of creative outlet? Definitely. Definitely, yeah. Honestly, I think everyone should pick up a musical instrument, um, e even if it's just piano. I can tell you that my, my mom has talked to a lot of, like, former students that said, you know, they wish they picked up piano because um, they kind of wish they, they knew how to play it now. But what's nice is with my mom's class... Um, she taught middle school music class and she did a keyboarding unit. Mm. So she also has some past students that reached out to her um, like 20, 30 years later saying that, you know, they're really appreciative of having that keyboarding unit. But it's not just music. I mean, you can always go to the artistic side, just have some sort of outlet. Do you do anything else? I know you mentioned you've been into gardening lately. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've been doing a lot of landscaping and gardening around my, my house. Um, that takes a, takes a lot of effort and, and money. <laughs> so how about when students are working on a project? Um, do they do some of them approach the same kind of end product a different way? You know, like they're, maybe if it's a woodworking project or something. Usually, when it comes to a like woodworking project, I, it's kind of like open ended. Like uh, I kind of give them like what you what tools you actually have to use, and then you can produce whatever you want. Like for example, we have a a carving unit, and so tell the students I'm like you can choose whatever you want. Like you can, you know. Uh, carve out a, a spoon if you really want to but it's just something that I want you to be able to take home and you know hopefully do a really good job on it so that you keep it and then you know when they're our age they look back on it and be like oh okay yeah I remember doing that in like high school and stuff like that because I still have I don't know if you do but I still have yeah, my I, toolbox I have a uh, a uh, money tray that is tack welded that I tack welded when I was like in sixth grade or something like that. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. I saw everyone made a toolbox in middle school. I think it was maybe like sixth or seventh grade. And um, I still have that with using the old Mac computers that have the colorful background. Yeah. The, the bubbles. Yeah, yeah. Those are so cool. And um, I was able to make a little label and I use my learned how to use like gradient and stuff like that. I always like to make it look different from other people's. So, are there certain projects like those open-ended projects? Are there certain products that a lot of students end up doing? And then, like maybe, what's one of the most creative products that a student has made? 
um well still still talking about the carving project like they can do whatever design that they want i've had and hopefully they pick a design that interests them right a lot of them just like take the easy route and just ask me like what should i do and just like i don't know what do you like but it's it's interesting to talk to students and tell them like what do you what do you like and then they just they just can't answer you because they don't know and they go to the typical like sports logo or something like that but i had a student who um he i don't know how he was a senior but he was at a reading level of probably like a fifth grade and he he was an all-star like football player and um he was like the typical kid that you know you tell them a project or you tell them to do something and he's just like whatever i'm not going to do it but i was on top of him and trying to like tell him like you need to do this in order to like get a good grade but like what do you like and i know he was he liked football so we we kind of came to agreement where you know i won't do this for everyone but we have a laser engraver we can laser you know the the yard markings of the football field on on this um carving project that you're doing and you can carve like a football and you carve out your your number for your football and then to make it even better you can easily add um goal posts on each end and he was able to complete it i lasered it for him and i was like i really hope that this makes it home because sometimes they just throw it in their backpacks throw in the garbage as they're walking out of school and the next day i asked him i was like did you actually take it home and show it to your mom and he was like yeah i actually did and and it's actually in my room so um just kind of pushing people pushing the students to like actually use their brains and think about stuff do you ever see students that aren't engaged that you know as the year goes on they've kind of like they kind of grow into it and they they realize that oh this is actually something that school can be fun a little bit yeah like uh thinking about my high schoolers i had a student where you know um this kid is not good in other classes um he uh, doesn't have like a high reading level again um he uh, i don't know he just um i don't know follows the the bat like the wrong crowd all the time Mm. but he was in one of my engineering classes and this was during covid too so it was online but then they started having students trickle in like every other day and so he was one of the lucky ones that was able to come every day for at least four days a week. And I just made him get the work done. I kind of talked to him on like a more personable level and like get to know like, who are you? What do you like? Um, what do you like to do? And I think at, I think by doing that kind of, I don't know, kind of gets the students thinking like, okay this teacher actually like kind of cares about me and like cares like what i do so this student he doesn't really do much of his work but he was able to complete my projects all the projects in this class is a full year class as well and mind you it's not like like the most perfect project but he at least attempted and put effort into it and i could see it in class And he was able to get some of his online work done, too, because, you know, I was literally hovering over him and telling him, like, you need to complete this. And he's able to complete it with getting like a passing grade, like either mid or mid 80s to 100. And I'm just like, see, you could do that here. It's just how come you can't do it at home? Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's more obviously it's more structural in school. And so with this student, um, I've had a lot of teacher meetings about him and the way that they explain this, like tell how the student is in their class. It's just like, I just think to myself is, are we talking about the same student? Because he doesn't act out like that. He, he doesn't disrespect me or anything like that. He always says thank you. And like goodbye every single day. And, um, and he, and I think he just respected me. 
And to the point where, you know, he was really into like trying to find a job. He's getting to the age where he can start looking for a job. And so I went out of my way and tried, tried writing his resume for him, like helping him out with that. But his resume could probably just fit on like a post-it note, <laughs> which I mean, like as like a, a freshman year, year yeah. of high school, you don't really have that much experience, but it's kind of, kind of like, Hey, let's do some volunteer work somewhere. <laughs> so, um, looking back on your career, do you see any solid stepping stones that brought you from whether it's like from high school on or maybe after college that led you to where you are today? Maybe it's relationships you made or risks you took or jobs that you took. Well, I feel like after college, after undergrad and graduated and it's just like, you're just trying to find a job. And you take the one that they, um, that say yes to you. And that's what I did. And I moved two hours away into pretty much middle of nowhere. <laughs> and, um, and lucky for me, it was at a school district that I learned so much. I had the, pretty much the best coworkers um, at that school. And um, I made my own own kind of goals because I knew once I moved down there, I didn't think I was going to s- stay there forever. I knew I wanted to somewhat move back home, but there was stuff that needed to be done. And one was to revamp that whole curriculum at that school. And I think by the time I left, um, my work there was done. Um, a lot of the curriculum at the time was just, it was just, um, kind of outdated and I kind of brought it up to, to present day. And I pushed them to get 3d printers. Um, before I left, uh, they were able to grab laser engravers, which are so cool. You can do so much with with laser engravers. And, um, also, I was able to help with the capital project, so they pretty much tore down our tech rooms and mm. and remodeled them to to my liking. <laughs> but unfortunately, I I couldn't. Yeah, I just pieced out. <laughs> but I left my mark, um, and it was time for me to move on. So, how do you stay interested in that type of career for? long term you know because you hear about teachers getting tenure and then they've been there forever and they just they just don't care how do you stay engaged and interested uh i think the students help out with that every year you get a whole different personalities all these different students and it's just amazing to hear like what they can accomplish like i i had a seventh grade student that went almost all the way to the final round for the spelling bee and she did awesome um it's just, I don't know, I I think it's too early to tell because I haven't been in, the, I haven't been teaching for very long, but it's getting close to 10 years, which is crazy. Uh, but I hope I, I know I will not be one of those teachers that are just like, okay, it's just like a job, I'm just here, here you go, do what you have to do and not really care to know the students. I'm always that person that just wants to know everything (laughs) and hope that hope for the future that you do you do well do you learn a lot from your students yeah i tell them that i'm like you know i think uh what i teach you is is something that you'll need to know later on in the future but i mean every day with just weird conversations that they have um either between their peers or just with myself um it kind of like opens my eyes and it's just like, Oh, okay. Didn't think of it like that way. And just like, uh, trends and music and all that kind of stuff too. You're pretty, you kind of got your finger on the pulse. Yeah. A I bit. thought I was kind of like up to date with like these trends, but now it's just like, I don't know. I don't, I don't deal with TikTok or anything like that. But sometimes I say things and they're just, and they like look at me and it's like, Oh, you actually know that? I'm like, yeah, it's like been around for a while now. 
or like a song and i was like oh yeah that was like my middle school dance dance song <laughs> they're like wow yeah what do they call you miss c mrs miss cerrone yeah they call me miss c cerrone um cerrone <laughs> so sometimes they have weird names for me like when i coached i had one girl call me uh uh, coach Pep. What'd you coach? Lacrosse. What's what and what's the significance of Coach Pep? Uh Cerrone, Pepperoni. Ah. <laughs> Cerrone, Pepperoni, Pep. Yep. Um what you mentioned you kinda of leaving your mark uh on your old your first job out of college. Um what what are you looking forward to in the future? Trying to find like a a school that I can be at forever. <laughs> Because, like, sometimes you're at a school and you just, I don't know, you feel like a, like a, I don't know, your first day of kindergarten. You just don't know, like, who anybody is and you just don't really feel like you belong. So I just want to find a place that I belong to. <laughs> and something that I enjoy teaching, too. Right. Um, do you prefer a particular grade or age range? So when I was in college, I was like, I want to be a high school teacher because I feel like you can make more of an impression on high schoolers and kind of help them figure out what they actually want to do. Because I don't think I had that much, that much help with figuring out what I wanted to do. I mean, yeah, we had to take like those tests that told you like, oh, you could be that. I remember I took it and one of the options was a mime. So I was like, uh, okay. <laughs> Never too late. <laughs> yeah, but I can't show that emotion. Whoops. Right. I can't show that emotion. Well, you're good at this down face thing. Yeah, but it'll stay like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you had a, they invented a cell phone that can call, make one phone call back in time. So if you were to leave a 60 second voicemail for your 17 year old self, what would you say? <laughs> Just do you. Make sure you actually uh, study abroad. Broaden your horizon. Check out different cultures. It could be a culture shock for you, especially at 17. Um, I don't know. Do your own research. <laughs> I didn't really do that much research on my own. And I feel like I, I don't know, just kind of settled for, for being a teacher. Because I knew I was like good working with kids. But not, sometimes when I look back, I'm just like, hmm. Maybe I wanted to be, maybe I could have been like an engineer or something like that. Hmm. I don't know. You ever think you might actually consider that? Seriously? I was thinking of it, but that means I had to have to go back to school and take some more classes. But you have to weigh the pros and cons with things and being a teacher uh, kind of has more pros than some of the other some of the other job opportunities. I mean, having summers off allows you to travel, right? Yeah. But I mean, I mean, in the, in this country, people frown upon teachers. They, they think that we're Oh, lazy. I could never do it. I could never do it. Yeah. I think it's teaching like isn't for job. everyone. I know that. Yeah. But it's just amazing to go to different countries and like the first thing that they say, are there any teachers here? And be an American it's just like you kind of learn to just like not even acknowledge because you probably they probably would talk trash about you and stuff like that but like in other cultures they worship teachers so it's just like that was a big shocker I'd say when I when I went to other countries so maybe in it, some advice for your younger self is to teach English abroad or teach something abroad yeah even though, I don't know, it's just like, you're always, it's different with the kids nowadays, but like when we were growing up, we knew school, college, job. Now, there's just like open-ended, like, like branches to different opportunities that kids could take that we didn't know existed or didn't even exist at the time. So you think it's a good thing? the opportunities they have nowadays to an extent some kids think you know they i'm gonna be a tiktok star or youtube famous. yeah exactly so, yeah. And i'm just like it's not it's not as easy because everyone 
is thinking like you and are trying to make it big. <laughs> you have to know people. And I just think, you know, maybe uh, if I, once I graduated, I, if I didn't find a job, maybe, maybe I would have gone abroad and taught English. Like with any of the, the bloggers I've been reading about that have taught English in Korea or in any Asian country, um, they've talked very highly of it. And they have a lot of benefits of when you, when you're applying to teach out there. Are you optimistic about the future of teaching in America? You said that people kind of, you think people are going to, that trend's going to continue or people are going to think, I don't necessarily feel that way, but I know that amongst teachers, that's kind of the perception. Um, are you think well, it's going to get better or do you think it's going to get worse? Um, I don't really know. For a while, the there's people that were talking about having kids not even come to school. But I think because of COVID, people start to realize that kids need school. Like some some households, you know, some of these students, when they go home, like they don't want to go home. And school is their safe place. And once they go home, they are probably living in a bedroom with the rest of their siblings. Like sometimes you you think like everyone has a good life, but some of these students that I've taught the past few years, their home lives are not good. And I honestly wish I could just take them and come live at my house because I just feel so bad for them. But there might be a reason for that and they learn from that and hopefully they will leave that past and try to make their future a lot better. But who knows? Um, your career is a little different, but if there's anything you want to plug, you are welcome to. If people can connect with you anywhere, follow you anywhere. I know you don't have like a big open social media presence because you don't want your students following you. Yeah. I changed my name, <laughs> but sometimes they, they find me for some odd reason. Yeah. Well, um, are you open to, I'll tell you, I'll just say this. If you're listening and you have questions for Sarah, um, you can email me at hello at creative dash truth dot com, or you can drop a comment on YouTube and I will relay it to Sarah cause I know how to find her. <laughs> um, yeah. Any uh, last words of wisdom for the listeners? No, just thank you for having me. I'm glad I was able to come visit savannah and see what's this all about i get to see where you work yeah and if uh, you're watching this you'll notice that we we're both glistening it's the hottest day in savannah today and uh so it's just finally starting to cool off now that the episode's wrapping up but yeah that's okay thanks for coming on thanks for having me yeah <laughs> uh in upcoming episodes of the creative truth i'm going to be talking to more artists entrepreneurs and creative professionals to help discover their path to success if you're listening on itunes please leave me a good review if you're watching on youtube don't forget to like share subscribe ring the bell uh you can learn more and get some swag at creative-truth.com if you have episode feedback or guest suggestions you can email email me at hello at creative-truth.com we got a new email it used to be we create truth at gmail.com you can send it to either one i'll get it uh, either way but again it's hello at creative-truth.com um i appreciate you listening and we will talk to you in the next episode